Welcome to my latest video on the most interesting archaeological discoveries in the news. This week I couldn't decide which story to lead with and put in my thumbnail because they're all so good. I decided to highlight the discovery of a phallic ornament in Mongolia, which may well be the oldest sexed anthropomorphic representation found in the world so far. I then go on to talk about the excavation of the so-called Stonehenge of the Netherlands, a burial mound with astronomical alignments. It's not a new discovery, but it's only just been made public. I also discuss Paleolithic jewellery found in the Cueva de Ardales in Spain, a cave with a long history starting with Neanderthal occupation. I look at the analysis of an ancient Egyptian vase depicting the deity Bess, that's yielded evidence of psychoactive drugs amongst other bizarre substances and the discovery of 12,000 year old flutes in Israel. Analysis of a stone artifact reveals its resemblance to a phallus. In 2016, archaeologists excavated a worked piece of rock from an open-air site called Tolbo 21 in Mongolia. However, it was only recently that researchers carried out mineralogical, microscopic and rugosymmetric analyses on the carved artefact to find out more about its origins and use. The results of the study have been published in the journal Scientific Reports. The experts were surprised to discover what appeared to be phallic features on it, dating to the Upper Paleolithic between 39,500 and 42,200 years ago. It's made of graphite, measures 4 centimetres in height and has two grooves carved into it, one in the top and one in the middle. Experts think the groove in the middle is meant to depict the glands of a penis and the one in the top is meant to represent the urethral opening. Since the back of the ornament is shiny and smooth, it's likely it was worn as a pendant with a cord of some sort wrapped around the central groove. Interestingly, after analysing geological deposits in the area and the context of the find, the experts concluded that the graphite had been sourced and worked more than 200 kilometers away before the finished pendant was transported to the site. The wearing of jewellery is seen as an indicator of early symbolic behaviours, with shells having been used as beads as far back as 142,000 years ago. However, the most sophisticated form of symbolic behaviour, that of figurative art, first appeared around 50,000 years ago in Southeast Asia, followed by Europe and Africa. But there are no examples of phallic symbolism this early in the archaeological record. In this photograph are other non-phallic personal ornaments excavated from Tolbor 21. Experts aren't sure why hunter-gatherers would have worn phallic pendants. In much more recent times, such as in ancient Rome, people used phallic symbols to ward off evil and boost fertility. It's quite possible that such beliefs are rooted in much more ancient times. The artefact is similar in appearance to a 20 centimetre long carved limestone pebble found in France, which dates back 28,000 years. This is known to have been used as a tool, but probably had a dual purpose. Although the features on the Mongolian ornament aren't so well defined, if the researchers are right, then it makes it the oldest phallic representation found so far and suggests an interesting social and ritual function for it. Archaeologists reveal 4,000 year old ceremonial monument in the Netherlands. A series of burial mounds discovered in 2017 near the Dutch town of Tiel are being hailed as the Stonehenge of the Netherlands. Archaeological research on the site, which is made up of three mounds, has only just been made public. Situated several kilometres from the Waal River, the site is made up of a main mound with a 20 kilometre diameter and two similar mounds, all of which were in use for roughly 800 years. These photographs are taken from the Teal Council's website. They've also created a YouTube video reconstructing what the sanctuary would have looked like when it was in use. I've put a link in the description below. The remains of 60 individuals were found in the largest burial mound, which is surrounded by a ditch punctuated with gaps that are aligned with the summer and winter solstices. Experts think it acted as an open air sanctuary and that the largest burial mounds alignments were a solar calendar, helping the local Bronze Age community to plan agriculture and feasts. 
Intriguingly, a glass bead was found with one of the burials, a material that did not exist in the Netherlands during the Bronze Age. Upon analysis, experts found that it had travelled around 5,000 kilometres from Mesopotamia. Numerous other finds have been excavated from the site, some of which are on display at the Thiel Museum, and others which have been sent to the National Museum of Antiquities in Leiden. Previous work at the site has also unveiled Roman artefacts. Paleolithic jewellery discovered in Spanish cave. A recent paper published in the journal Environmental Archaeology details the finds uncovered from a cave in Malaga known as the Cueva de Adalas. Research carried out by the Neanderthal Museum of Colonia, the University of Colonia and the Cueva de Adalas discovered 13 freshwater and marine shells that had been carefully worked by modern humans between 25,000 and 30,000 years ago. These shells were worn as necklaces and earrings. Such finds are rare since only a hundred similar artefacts have been found in the Mediterranean over the years and these were all located near the coast. The Cueva de Adalas is 50 kilometres inland so its inhabitants must have travelled to the Bay of Malaga to retrieve the marine shells, a journey that shows such items were very important to them. The team also discovered vermitids which are a type of tube shaped snail, rare in the archaeological record, it's possible the cave had a ceremonial function at the time the jewellery was being made and worn. Discovered in the 19th century, the Cueva de Ardalas is most famous for having more than 1,000 paintings and engravings on its walls, ceilings, rocks and speleothems. Another paper published in the journal PLOS One in 2022 outlines the results of previous excavations at the site, which discovered that the cave was first inhabited by Neanderthals around 65,000 years ago. Modern humans then moved in roughly 35,000 years ago and continued to use the cave on and off until the Copper Age. The earliest art was non-figurative, including abstract signs and hand stencils, whereas later paintings depict animals and other figures. Ancient Egyptian worshippers of Bess may have used drugs. An article posted on Research Square titled Ritual Revealed Psychotropic Substances in a Ptolemaic Egyptian Vase details research into the contents of a vessel dating to the 2nd century BCE. This article is a preprint, which means it hasn't been peer-reviewed yet. The vessel is in the shape of the Egyptian deity Bes, who was worshipped for his protection of households, mothers and children. Ancient Egyptian people often kept images of Bes in their homes, and chambers of Saqqara were dedicated to Bes and his wife Beset. It's thought this part of Saqqara may have been used for fertility rituals. There are numerous ceramic vessels depicting Bess, but their exact purpose has never been determined. A study in 2004 tried to find animal proteins in 23 such vessels, but was not successful. The researchers involved in the latest study used proteomic and genetic analyses and synchrotron radiation-based Fourier transform infrared microspectroscopy to examine residues in a vase kept at the Tampa Museum of Art. They found remnants of Syrian rue, a plant whose seeds cause hallucinations and traces of blue water lily, which contains a psychoactive alkaloid with sedative properties. The team also identified fermented alcohol and human fluids, including mucus, blood and possibly breast milk. It would appear that the ancient Egyptian worshippers of Bess imbibed this bizarre concoction while carrying out a ritual, maybe a reenactment of the myth of the solar eye. In this myth, Bess gives the goddess Hathor a drink made up of alcohol and a drug so that she falls asleep rather than carrying out revenge. In ancient Egyptian graffiti, Bess is called the giver of oracles and the giver of dreams, so this provides further evidence that her cult was associated with psychoactive drugs. However, it's also possible that the remnants of the vase are an isolated case and may not apply to the cult as a whole. Research needs to be done on additional vessels to see if a pattern emerges. Archaeologists find 12,000-year-old flutes in Israel. A team of archaeologists have unearthed a collection of 12,000-year-old flutes at the Natufian site of Ain and Malaha in Israel. 
The Natufians were the last hunter-gatherers in the Levant and eventually transitioned to an agricultural economy. An analysis of the finds has been published in the journal Scientific Reports. The site has been under excavation since the 1950s, but the flutes, officially known as aerophones, were only found last year amongst more than a thousand bird bones. Seven flutes made from bird bones were uncovered, all of which had been carved from small waterfowl. All but one were fragmented. Researchers found remnants of red ochre on them, which shows they were painted originally, as well as signs that they were attached to strings and worn. The sounds created by the flutes were similar to those produced by Eurasian sparrowhawks and common kestrels. Researchers think they were either used for hunting, creating music, or communicating with birds. The Natufians created ornaments from talons, which suggests they valued birds. These are the oldest sound-making instruments to be found in the Levantine region. In fact, none have been found dating to the Neolithic either. Other instruments made from bird bone and mammoth ivory have been found in southwestern Germany dating to 40,000 years ago, and a 60,000-year-old Neanderthal flute was excavated from a cave in Slovenia. The bird bones used for the Natufian flutes were specifically chosen to make certain sounds, which shows a knowledge of acoustics. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. Please hit the like button if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.